Hello and welcome to the Analyzer Overview video and demo. In this video and demo, we'll be giving you a tour of Analyzer. We'll look at the menu, such things as settings, the archive management functionality, and the performance charts functionality. We'll go ahead and dive right into the tour of Analyzer by logging into the system. Then we'll select our system. Then we'll go ahead and hover over system in the top. We'll go down to statistics for block. Here we have the menu of Analyzer. We have the settings, the archive management, the performance charts, and a miscellaneous. If we go ahead and click on performance data logging, this will bring up the information about our target machine. It'll bring up our periodic archiving as well as the ability to to stop automatically after a certain amount of days. This is where you can go ahead and start Analyzer and you can check the status as you can see here at the bottom that it is running and when it was started. If we go ahead and look at the customized charts, in the customized charts you'll see the spot where you can go ahead and click the advanced Analyzer characteristics which is off by default so we'll turn that on. Well, you can go ahead and display information about the line charts. Under the survey charts tab is where you can go ahead and ch set your thresholds for utilization, throughput, bandwidth, response time, and average queue length. You can change your graph colors if you'd like. Under the archives tab is where you can go ahead and select your default archive location. We'll click apply so we get our advanced characteristics and we'll hit OK. Under the archive management section is where you can open an archive you can view an archive, you can close an archive. You can go ahead and click retrieve archive to go ahead and grab an archive. The retrieve box will come up. It will show you any archives that are already on the SP. Here you'll see we do have a couple of them already. You can go ahead and create a new archive only if you have collected enough samples since the last archive was created. So on this system here as you can see it says less than 10 samples have been collected since the last archive meaning we don't have any I.O. running to the system so there's nothing for it to go ahead and collect. So if you want to go ahead and save one of these archives you'll select it, click the retrieve button, the message will come up to ask you to confirm retrieving your archives. We'll say yes. The reason for saving off a NAR file might be if you have a performance issue that happens overnight or over a certain period of the day that you want to try to analyze, you'll go in, start the analyzer, and then you can go ahead and set it to either automatically archive, or you can go in, if you're having a performance issue in the morning, turn on analyzer, let it run for a couple hours, and then grab the NAR file and have a look at it and see what's going on on the system during that period where you had the performance issue. It goes head down the bottom, says done and what it actually did was save the file where you have the save as here wherever we listed it there so in my case users my folder here and then this name with the SPA and then the date and time stamp on it and we can say done if we want to go ahead and open that archive we'll click the open and then we find that after clicking the open we can open the archive by finding the one we saved and hitting open. It'll give us again our time range to set. We'll say OK. And it'll go ahead and open the performance survey view. The close and view will only work if you have an R file that you previously opened. The merge archive here is where you go ahead and select two files to merge them together. It is recommended to only merge NAR files of the same SP. You don't want to merge NAR files of SPA and SPB, for example, because those NAR files have the same concurrent information, both on SPA and SPB, so merging those is not needed. And this is where you can also dump an archive. And this is a wizard to go ahead and dump the archive out to a text format. And we'll just go ahead and cancel that wizard because we don't want to do the dump archive. Down in the performance charts area, is where we'll see the live data on the system if we go ahead and click on one of these right now we'll go ahead and take a look at the performance overview on my system here I don't have any activity so that's why we don't see anything 
Here you'll have the throughput tab, a bandwidth tab, and a dirty pages percent tab at the top. You'll have the legend on the bottom left and the performance configuration on the bottom right here. The performance survey, if we open that up, it goes ahead and it builds its hierarchy of performance survey. Now you'll see here that you have your utilization total throughput, total bandwidth, and response time. In the customization, we did set a couple of those. As you can see here, the 70% for utilization and the 100% for response time. The green boxes around each one of these indicates that it's OK and we're not over that threshold limit we set. So you can go ahead and see for LUN0 here, we have a green box around the utilization because we're well under that. And we can go ahead and close the performance survey. If we open the performance summary, the performance summary will go ahead and build its hierarchy and display its information. In the left, we have your trees, one for LUN, one for storage pool, and one for SP. We have the metrics down the bottom left, where you can select whichever metrics you'd like to display, and it will display in the graph on the right-hand side. We'll go ahead and close the performance summary. And in the, if we click on performance detail, you'll see we have the same trees on the left and we have the metrics down the bottom and we'll have the graph on the right hand side we'll go ahead and select LUN0 and you'll see because again my system has no workload going on it we don't have anything that shows up if you right click on the graph when you have something selected you can go ahead and configure the chart a little bit with the chart configuration and the chart configuration looks like this where you have some things you can go ahead and change the colors of, the line colors, the point colors, the point styles, the point size, things like that. We'll go ahead and click OK and close out of that. If we go ahead and look at the miscellaneous section, that's where we can create the device to the LUN file. We'll go ahead and select that option and we'll choose a host and then go ahead and save that off. This will go ahead and create a text file on your system that provides useful information about the storage system LUNs seen by Unisphere, including the LUN operating system device name. Knowing the operating system device name can help you write management scripts using the CLI that will perform maintenance and other tasks. For additional information, you can open the Unisphere help and search on Unisphere Analyzer. You can also see the knowledge base articles listed here for performance information and analyzing performance issues. Don't forget to see the other videos in the Analyzer series as well.